fuori dalla velocità e alle sue curve sopra le barche e alle sue alte velocità lungo i rettilinei. Nonostante tutti gli aggiornamenti subiti, mantiene sempre un po' quel tocco di vecchio stile che la quota non distingue rispetto alla prima vista. Monza è un circuito storico con endurance racing being organized here since 1949. Monza, the temple of speed, where LMP2 cars can reach speeds of up to 314 kilometers per hour. Monza, the fourth and penultimate round of the 2020 European Le Mans series. Enjoy the show. GTE and LMP3, two experienced teams are the championship leaders. Proton competition in GTE with its 77 Porsche and United Autosports lead in LMP3 with Ligier number two. Both crews feature rookie drivers who could be crowned ELMS champions at their very first attempt. As a rookie in ELMS is really exciting, uh, especially with Porsche. So yeah, I'm just enjoying it really much at the moment. It's uh, obviously my first year with United and uh, the team have given us a fantastic car so you know it's full credit to them really and uh, I've got the, the right drivers in the car with me to do the job as well so uh, yeah fingers crossed this weekend we get back on the top step. I never drove a GTE car before and also I, I'm normally used to sprint races, here's endurance, so you need to be a bit more conservative, let's say, in the race, looking after traffic, looking after your tires. So that's all small things which are really important at the end to learn. First time in the, in the dark was, was interesting, so that was a new experience for me, which I really enjoyed, and uh, a few new tracks as well for me this year, so yeah, it's been really cool. Any cars can win in our class, And at the end of the day, it's a lot about strategy. I think at the moment we should still focus about winning races and then we will see maybe at the last weekend what happens. Hopefully our job now is to you know, try and win this championship and uh, fingers crossed we can get that done. They've won them on and they lifted the World Championship three weeks ago. They lead the ELMS. Phil Hansen and Felipe Albuquerque could achieve an unprecedented LMP2 Grand Slam over a season. Some people said, like, what, like, what would you rather, win Le Mans or win where? It's, it, it, you can't pick. I, I can't pick, at least. United Autosports claims their third straight win in LMP2 in World Endurance Championship races. We were leading and we've been winning on a strike of winning races in the World Championship. It would have been unfair to not win the championship because we are being much more consistent than anyone else. Then yeah. Le Mans, in a way, it's more unique, it's a special one. Yeah. Um, more to and chance with all the things that could go wrong in the race. Exactly, and yeah. being bad luck. I mean, it's a good example of that is the 37 that they were doing a great season and unfortunately they had one bad luck which take them completely out of the contention. Uh, and it should not be as hard because yeah. they were fighting well and now they're like P3 or P4 in the championship. Yeah. If you look back at the history books, you'll see United 22, we won so many races, but if you were really there along the route, you'd realize that it was actually quite a tough battle at every race. I think we need to always keep our feet on the ground. Doesn't matter the past, we won Le Mans, we won the World yeah, Championship. Yeah, definitely. We are looking good for the LMS. But there's still a lot of work to do. But it's know. not there. So we still need to do the job first, and then we can talk about the dream, the perfect dream season. Yeah, for sure. But it will be the perfect season if we do the LMS as well, and doing, being the first one to win everything, yes. But first, yeah. things first. First, we need to win yeah. the LMS. Thanks, but you can't get first. 
was one time like the really first one I was like three times better but then I hit the limiter for a long three time. Three times better what? Huh. Then me, better than me. Um, last victory, I mean, Lama felt like a victory. We were in seventh place uh, at the end of the race and first Pro-Am lineup to finish, and so we were really excited with that one. A few days ago, I feel like I've had a lot of them this year. Uh, I'm getting used to it, so had to have one to get here. Uh, probably about 20 minutes ago, took a picture of the car. Yeah, last night I was listening to uh, Matt Dari to go to sleep. Uh, very chill music. Oh, that's a good one. Um, certainly before COVID, somewhere in March. The gal that cuts my hair, uh, yeah, she didn't want to cut it during quarantine, and I just let it roll. Well, I'm surrounded by casinos living in Vegas, uh, although I don't go to many. Uh, probably back in March when I had a friend in town. Well, in this last session, I locked up the rear going into the second chicane and uh, ended up on a banana, so that wasn't good. Um, I wasn't scared, but it wasn't good. Super excited about ELMS 2021. I hope we can have the fans back and let's go. It's been a tough season so far for the reigning champions in LMP2 EDEX Sports. They've had disappointing results. Two cars were wrecked at Le Mans before the race even started. And now Paul at Chatan is unable to make it to Monza after testing COVID positive. But fortunately, in team manager Nick Minassian, they have an ace up their sleeve. After Paul Luke tested positive, Patrice, Paul and the team decided, I mean, we decided together that, that I drive in his place, so I'm back behind the wheel. Uh, Nico wasn't sure, uh, but I was absolutely certain he's uh, definitely a reserve driver. He knows the team well, he's got huge experience, and we've got nothing left to lose. So let's have fun, and I'm so pleased that Nico's racing with us. I'm loving it. It's fantastic. I would have preferred Paul Luke to race, no question. I don't want to be a drag on my teammates. I'd be ashamed, but I think I'll be all right. As the car, I'll focus on my team manager duties as usual, but in the car, I'll be 100% on the case to deliver a great performance. <laughs> It's the kind of track I love. I won here the last time I raced here. All right, it was 13 years ago with Peugeot. Let's have fun. Not everybody has the chance to race, so when you do, you've got to enjoy it. We're here to win anyway, not to make up the numbers. Autodromo and the pressure is mounting as this race could be a title decider. And just to add a bit of complication to the mix, they've even predicted some showers. Let's go racing. We think it's going to be quite an interesting race for strategy wise. I think it's going to be quite tight on fuel. Um, so depending on how strategy goes out with full course yellows and safety cars, I think pretty much every car in the field could be uh, could be fighting for the win today. As a lineup, we look pretty strong. So what will be will be. You know, obviously we want to win, um, but we also are starting to think championship now too.
This is our home track. We've been uh, pushing the whole season to get this result, and it's, uh, it is pretty special to, to get it uh, in our home race. This is a very old-style track. It's a track where you don't have many runoff. The, the speed is pretty high. It's all about uh, being able to really push the braking and exit fast from the corners because you always have a long straight. The fact is you drive with a very low downforce, so in the fast corner the car is really unstable. Really nice to drive here for me. We are entering in the final part of the championship. Uh, our main target today is to clinch the championship and think about it. If, uh, if it's not possible, it's to minimize the damage. If we can go for the win, definitely we will go. Uh, but always thinking now that is more important the championship than the win. In the end, yeah, Monza Parabolica, the Ascari corners, the heavy breaks into these chicanes, it's, it's, it's amazing. Mechanics, please start clearing the grid. We are under one minute to start the formation lap for the four hours of Monza. Here we go then, 34 cars head off on the green flag lap to start the four hours of Monza, the fourth, the penultimate race of the 2020 European Le Mans series. The track's been declared wet, which means you can use wet weather tires, but it is going to dry fast. Phil Hansen on pole on the driver's right. Roman Rusinov alongside him for G-Drive Racing. Second row, Jonathan Hershey for Duquesne and Antonin Borger for Cool Racing on the outside. The leading car pulls off into the pit lane. The formation looks good. We are about to go racing. The G-Drive car dropping back a little. And here we go. We have started the four hours of Monza. Track is very damp, Phil Hansen on the inside, Jonathan Hershey from row two challenging, big lock up from Hansen, he's going to go deep into the chicane, and the sister car of Willow in the other United car has come up well, there's a spinner, and that's Roman Rusinov in the G-Drive car, he was trying to be cautious, but got caught out, and he's on the kerbs, he's beached, and that might be a safety car. Well, almost everybody's made it through safely. There's the Algarve Pro number 24 car, but we've got to change to the leader, I think. Yes, we have. Jonathan Hershey leads from Anthony Borger in second, Willow in the United car in third, Nico Jaman fourth for Panis. There's James Dason. He's in trouble. The RLR M Sport car and G Drive both stranded. Pit entry closed, safety car deployed. Let's take a look at the start again with Phil Hansen for United, defending hard on the inside, big lockup, carries too much speed in, bumps over the kerbs, can't get turned, full locks on in the gravel, and now rallying his way back out as half the LMP2 field goes right by him, looking for a gap. And for Roman Rusinov, I'm afraid, no chance of getting off the kerbs, the team can't believe it. Again, whoa, with Phil Hansen, dodges the bullet as the RLR M Sport car spins. And there was contact there. You can see it from Martin Hipper's view in the Inter Europol competition car. Three or four cars got together. And the G-Jive car nudged round by Alexandre Cuneau of Graf. And this is the Graf driver's view. Oh. Drive through penalty car 39 for causing a collision at T1 at the start of the race. Safety car is coming in at the end of this lap. Leader Jonathan Hershey started third. Nico Jamans up to second from ninth on the grid. Hershey weaving. Now backs it up. Oh, and contact! 
Nico Saman caught out there as Jonathan Hershey stopped weaving and suddenly slowed. Damage to the back of Hershey's. Major damage to the left front of Nico Jama and their race is in shreds. Oh, he should have gone into the pits. Will he make it all the way round? Is that left front corner actually raceable? Well, he continues, but that is huge drama for Nico Jama and the Panis Racing entry. A great start and caught out as Hershey slowed right down. Now, here he comes. Looks like he still feels the car is okay. He may not know how much damage there is on the left front corner. Nico Jaman shedding bits down into the very anti Ascari, challenging for the lead. He's going the long way round the outside. That's astonishing. What a pass in tricky conditions. Wow, Nico Jama leading the race from Jonathan Hershey. Barely 10 minutes run, we've already had a safety car and lots of drama. What is a four hours of Monza going to be like if it starts like this? And Jama into the pits. Those going on at Panis and there's no question this car has lots of speed and Jama will be really fired up. GT lead battle. The Ferrari is Claudio Schiavone, the leader. Christian Reed in second in the Dempsey Proton Porsche ahead of Duncan Cameron. Oh, and he's overshot the chicane. Got it all wrong at the Roger. And Duncan Cameron moves up to second in the white and green Spirit of Race Ferrari. And now Christian Reed with Michael Fassbender, his teammate right behind. Battle for second, and as Fjord back in number 20, the high-class car all over the back of Antonin Borga in Cool Racing 37. Going the long way round the outside. Phenomenal stuff on the exit of the Parabolica. That is bravery in mixed conditions. And as Fjord back, the Dane is still there. Borga, the Swiss driver with the inside line and about half a nose in front, but not enough. Too damp on the inside to defend that. Up to second for high class. What a start for Anders Fjordback from 14th on the grid in a quarter of an hour. He is challenging the race leader, Jonathan Hershey, down to the Parabolica. Hershey goes for the outside line and there's not enough grip. The car nearly swaps ends. Through goes the high class car. Anders Fjordback is our new race leader. Will Owen under pressure for third place from Henning Enquist in the Algarve Pro car. No change there. And there is Jonathan Hershey down to fifth place. Oh, a great exit out of the Retifilio for Henning Enquist. Drives around the outside of Will Owen on the damp in Curva Grande. That's what downforce can do for you at those speeds. So now then, what about Anders Fjordback? Can he clear off here? Battle Royal developing behind. All change in GTE as well. Duncan Cameron leads in the Spirit of Race Ferrari. Christian Reed defending second from Mikhail Bronizewski, the Kessel Racing driver from the back row of the grid. Fantastic action through all three classes here at the Damp Monza. Jonathan Hershey defending from Anthony Borga. Borga locks up, goes straight on at the Roger. So Hershey will go by and Will Owen and Sophia Flush there in the red and black Richard Mill Racing Team entry and the red, white and blue of Alexandre Cuneau. He's up to sixth. Will Owen for second ahead of Henning Enquist. The battle continues, touch from behind. Enquist runs into the back of the United car and he goes straight through the chicane. Pole sitter, this is Phil Hansen in the pits for his first stop, just 20 minutes into the race. They've gone from intermediates, I think, to full slicks. Henning Enquist in second place, ahead of Will Owen at United. What the number 22 United car learns, all the other United cars will learn about the viability of slicks here as well. It is drying rapidly, isn't it? Flashing the headlights, Henning Enquist coming up behind the GTE lead battle. Goes by the 77 Porsche of Christian Reed right in front of him. Is Duncan Cameron in the Spirit of Race Ferrari. Will Owen doesn't quite get the gap in traffic he needs. Out of the Parabolica, look at this, cars everywhere. 
On board with Alexandre Cuneau. This is the battle for third now. John Falp in the Algarve Pro car all over the back of him. Cuneau going the long way around the outside. Picks up a place rather than loses one. Goes around the outside of Antonin Borger in the 37 cool racing car. So Graf up to third. Borger coming back at him. The Graf car was also held up by the LMP3 in the pits G drive. Looks like it's going back in the garage. It is. It's been a tough day already at Monza for the G drive team. We decided to go out on slicks, which was uh, very bold, I think, um, and didn't make Roman's life easier. So he already became a little bit uh, vulnerable into turn one. And yeah, when he got tapped and stuck on the curb, we picked up a water leakage, so we lost water pressure. And um, yeah, that's why we had to box and solve the leakage and put back the cool cooling water into the uh, yeah, system. Into the pits, United number two. This is the LMP3 pole sitter, Robert Weldon. LMP3 leader on track, Martin Hipper for into Europol, sharing with Dino Lunardi. Race leader in. This is Anders Fjord back at high class. Really important stop for them now. Get him turned around. Heading in, Chris, the Swede in at Algarve Pro. He's come in from second in LMP2. And that leaves Algarve Pro in the lead because this is John Falk. Car number 25 for the American, sharing with Simon Trummer and Gabby Aubrey. What a good lineup that is. At the Roger, all oh, contact. Late lunge from the Porsche. Christian Reed to go by Francesco Draconi in that LMP2 car. Driver change of Dragon Speed out gets Henrik Hedman, the Swede. In gets Charles Milesi, the Frenchman. Battle for fifth place in LMP2. Anthony Borger with the drier racing line, you'd think. Henning Enquist has to surrender in the black and white Algarve Pro car. Heading towards the end of the first hour here in Monza. Battle for the lead with United Autosports running down high class. This is Willow in in 32, chasing Anders Fjord back. The day ahead of the American. And behind him is Phil Hansen in the number 22 United car going well. Hey Phil, box, box, this lap, box, this lap for fuel only. Voice of Gary Robertshaw, his engineer. And they are clearly happy with their slick tyres. They went to slicks early and it's paying off. Alexandre Coigny limbering up at Cool Racing. Hope he doesn't drop the ball out on track. His teammate currently in seventh place, but this is the battle for fourth. John Falp in the Algarve Pro, black and grey under pressure. Trying to defend against Jonathan Hershey. Back on the racing line. Hershey's going to send it. He does. Up through into fourth he goes into Ascari. And that's the way you do it. This is not the way you do it. James Maguire realising there's not enough room to get by Sergio Pianizzola. Takes too much curb on the inside. Hits the Italian's Ferrari anyway. And a double contact. They're both stuck in the gravel. 10 seconds. Stop and go penalty on car three for causing a collision with car number 60. And Pianizzola understandably very aggrieved at that. Full course yellow. Full course yellow. Good timing for the stop for Spirit to race. Full course yellow, everybody else will be chuntering around at 80 k's. Well timed stop as well for the Iron Dames. Manuela Gosner handing over to Rahel Frey. The all female crewed Iron Lynx Ferrari. And Manuela, the Italian here racing at home. Full course yellow removed. Back to green flag racing then. With still just under three hours to go. GTE a battle for second place. On the outside, the 77 Proton Competition Porsche. That's Alessio Picariello. And inside him, Nicola Cadet for Kessel Racing, the 74 Ferrari, side by side. Both picking up a bit of a tow from the Spirit of Race car that's in front of them. Who's going to win this battle under braking? They are both being desperately brave. Picariello just hangs on ahead of Nicky Cadet. And Duncan Cameron just inches in front of that battle. And the Porsche dives through into the Parabolica. Inside the Spirit of Race Ferrari. Taking the lead in GTE. 
big bunch of cars coming by as well. On board with Phil Hansen, our pole sitter for United Autosports. With that first lap gravel trap excursion, they're a little bit out of sync with some of their rivals. But that could help them. Nicky Cade ahead of Duncan Cameron now for second place in GTE. So is Cameron starting to struggle on tyres? Replay of the Retifilio, Will Owen outbreaking himself at the first chicane. And Phil Hansen picking up the pieces and going by. Michael Fassbender here in the Porsche being dive bombed by Wolfgang Triller in the DKR LMP3 car that then stops in the middle of the Retifilio. And he had nowhere to go there. Black and white flag, car 93 for a contact at the exit of T2. Yeah, it wasn't really Fassbender's fault. It was not an easy start for everybody. Conditions were a little bit difficult with a really slippery track. And uh, Chris had a little contact with the LMP2, but the car is fine. Now we lost a little bit of second in the pit stop, but then uh, Alessio managed to get the position back on track, so it looks good at the moment. We wait uh, this stint and then uh, we have to keep the lead and uh, have a clean race now. In the grab pit, number 39 car, James Allen takes over from Alexandre Cuneau. They've come in from third place. Frantic action at the front of all three classes. Arjun Maini, the Indian driver, taking over the second place Algar Pro car from Henning Enquist. And John Falp is out of 25 at Algarve Pro, handing over to Seaman Trummer, race leader Anders Fjord back at high class. Will Owen, oh, and again at the Retifilio, getting it all wrong under braking. Rob Weldon in the pits for United Autosports, number two car from second place in LMP3. It's been another strong weekend so far for United. That's Julian Canal waiting to take over at Panis from his teammate Nicola Jama. Here is Jama piling the pressure on Alexandre Quagny. This is the battle for seventh down the inside. Much drier there now into the Retifilio. And through he goes. Well, that was classic Monza stuff, wasn't it? Use the slipstream, slingshot by into the braking area, and the pass is made. We are under full course yellow. We're sending marshals on track. A little bit of bodywork. Looks like a modesty panel from the rear of a P2 or P3 car. Matteo was my teammate, had a crash in practice too. So the monocoque was damaged, so we had to change it uh, yesterday during the night. Uh, luckily it arrived like at midnight and then the boys had like eight, nine hours to, to everything fix. Luckily, they, I mean, they did a great job. Uh, the car is perfect, there's, there's no issue with it and everything feels okay and also that the first uh, one I had was, was pretty good. Five, four, three, two, one, full course yellow removed, full course yellow removed. Perfect timing for the 20 high class car, comes back out immediately into green flag racing. Long way still to go here. This is Duquesne's Konstantin Tereshenko. Whoa! Almost collected Julian Canal. Canal in the Palace racing car, fresh out of the pit lane. Lucky to survive that. And G-Drive back into the garage again. Okay, Mikko, you can jump out. Oh, bad news for Mikkel Jensen and the crew. Seaman Trummer for Algar Pro attacking Charmi Lacey for Dragon Speed. The Algarve car goes down the inside into the Parabolica. Nicely done. Look happy with that in the Algar Pro garage, and so they should. That's him up to 11th in LMP2. Julian Canal out of Ascari. And he's just been held up a little bit by the LMP3 car in front. So Konstantin Tereshenko gets a run down the back straight towards the Parabolica. Oh, they almost touched. That was very close indeed. Canal holds on in fifth. Let's get down to high class and hear from Anders Fjordback. Yeah, it was obviously super crazy. Uh, 
First of all, we took the right decision and started on Schlicks, where mostly st uh, most of the guys started on Intermeets. Then there was a big... A lot of action going on. A lot of action going on in turn one. We found a quick way around it. And uh, the first lap, it was still a little too damp for the Schlicks, but we were a bit lucky with the safety car that uh, kind of uh, helped us through it. And then uh, everyone had to uh, box for Slick tires, and uh, we could take the lead, so it was super nice. Now, Dennis is in the car, and uh, it seems it'll stay dry for the rest of the evening or afternoon. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Dennis will do a double stand, and I'm in after that. I'd export eyes on track because the team manager is at the wheel. Nick Minasio out in car number 28. This is the battle for seventh now. Beitzke Visser, the red and black Richard Mill racing team right in front. Minasio, a winner last time he raced at Monza. Let's see how well he can progress here. And just know how huge the smile is on his face. GT leader is in the pits. Proton competitions. Alessia Picariello jumps out. Michele Beretta takes over. Martin Hipper leading in LMP3 for Inter Europol. They're having a nice clean run so far. Two hours to go. Michael Fassbender watching from the pits. We were always thinking about doing uh, the double stint at the beginning for me and, you know, just uh, trying to keep consistent times. Obviously this morning, uh, it's pretty tricky conditions. So the most important thing for me this weekend was really to keep it on the track, you know, and to not make any mistakes. Pit stop at United for Felipe Albuquerque in the number 22 LMP2 car, came in from second place. Tires look okay, so fuel only. DKR Engineering's Francois Kierman under pressure from Garrett Grist. This is the LMP3 battle for third place. Number 10 Nielsen Carr with a run on the inside of the Parabolica. He's got a great run going. He's on the inside line. Technically a bit more grip on the outside for Kierman in the number four DKR car. Who will be late and brave on the brakes? Kierman yields to Garrett Grist. So change there at the Retifilio. Right behind is the Panis LMP2 car. Trying to find a way through. Nice mask. Oh, busy pit straight. Arjun Maini with the white nose and down the inside of him, Konstantin Tereshenko picks up 10th position. I think Miney a little held up off the Parabola car by the LMP3 car that's now behind them. That slowed him down. And in front is the Inter Europol LMP2 machine. So the Duquesne car on the charge. Inter Europol's Matavos Isakayan is the next target. The bright yellow and green machine. And the Duquesne car right behind. Gets a great run out of Varianti Ascari. And there is slower cars again in front. Isakayan goes deep on the driver's right. Oh, and the back of the car has blown off. And a spin for the number 10 car there, Garrett Grist. Guys, we need to change engine cover rear end. Wow. That's what near 200 mile an hour wind can do to bodywork and they have to hope that it hasn't torn all the mountings out full course yellow full course yellow well, nearly an hour and 40 minutes to go who needs a pit stop this is a good chance to take one if you're close to the pits even just to top up for fuel and the marshals recovering as much of the debris as they can full course yellow removed full course yellow removed Back to green flag racing then. And at Algarve Pro, Gabriel Aubrey runs around to take over from Swiss Simon Trummer. Aubrey, very experienced LMP2 racer. Heading back out on track. Race leader Felipe Albuquerque, the number 22 United Autosports car, got out of sync early on. 
And is still out of sync, but is at the top of the pile. LMP3 leader is the black Euro International car, Nicola Maolini, number 11. Number 13, the first of the two yellow and green cars from Inter Europol. That is Dino Lunardi, who's second in P3. And now a challenge. Lunardi with a good run out of the Parabolica. Past comes the Panis car, he'll tuck in behind it and he takes the lead in LMP3. It's a good move from Dino Lunardi to take the lead of the class for Inter Europol competition. Euro International car looking to be struggling a little for pace right there. Here's a great battle for sixth place. Edex Sports, Nick Minassi on ahead of Nico Lapierre for cool racing. Two extremely quick and hugely experienced drivers and Lapierre gets the run into Ascari. I think Minassi knew that was coming, stayed on driver's left. When you can fight it, you fight it. When you can't, you can't. Julian Canal is right in front in the 31 Panis car. Lapierre looks like he's absolutely on a charge right up behind the 31 car immediately he pounces and again a p3 car not helping julian canal in the parabolica lapierre with the slipstream through the parabolica down the straight and he's got the dirtier side of the track but that's where the grip is and through he goes for fifth position Makes up two places in half a lap. Great racing from Nico Lapierre. United Autosports driver change again. Phil Hansen taking over from Felipe Albuquerque. Heading back out on track. Here's the battle for sixth position now. Tatiana Calderon, the red and black Richard Mille racing team again, slightly held up in the parabolica by the Spirit to race Ferrari and a slingshot for John Lancaster for Algarve Pro. And he'll have the grippy pass of the track at the end of the braking area. Through he goes. Another classic Monza pass. And he's up to sixth position. GT leader David Perel for Kessel Racing. And the gap over Michele Beretta now just 38 seconds. Michelle Gatting in third for the Iron Dames. Stop four, and it's fueled back. And the high-class racing entry, the Dane back in the car. And he will rejoin in third place. Phil Hansen leading, Alex Brundle second. It's United Autosport 1-2, LMP3, Dino Lenardi leading for Inter Europol competition by 11 and a half seconds over Tom Gamble for United. Pit stop for the United number two car, Tom Gamble handing over to Wayne Boyd right at pit out. So a long time to get to your garage, not so much to get back out. There's Tom Gamble after his stint. Coming back out is our GT leader, David Perel. 77 Porsche is in second, 83 the Iron Dames car is in third place for the Kessel Racing Ferrari. That should now be its final pit stop. We're inside the final hour of the race. Can they maintain their position at the top of the pile? It's all looking good so far. On board with Phil Hansen from United Autosports. And again, the United team on a real streak here. He and Felipe Albuquerque, the new world champions in LMP2 in WEC. And right now they can do no wrong. And when things don't go their way, they somehow manage to recover it. <laughs> Great work from the team in preparation, in driving, in work in the pits. It's a 1-2 for United. High class, Dragon Speed, Cool Racing and Panis, the top six. And here is the high class Dragon Speed battle for third position. Ben Hanley, he's the top driver in the Dragon Speed car. Chasing down Anders Fjordback. Fjordback the leader early on, don't forget. A really good gamble on slick tyres at the start and a safety car that helped them survive the tricky wet early laps. As he told us, then able to drive their way into the lead as others stopped to change off their intermediates. Now, though, it is definitely fully dry, slick territory, unless it rains at the end of the race, of course. Ben Hanley closing in on Fjordback. 
fingers crossed, and in a high class garage. Gap has come right down. It's now barely a car length. Hanley not quite close enough to have a lunge. He's looking. I think he's just trying to spook his rival outbreaks himself. And maybe that was a genuine attempt to try and do something. Comes back in behind the high class car though. Race leader in the pit lane, so too is the Panis car. These should be the final stops then. They should have enough to go. So Phil Hansen stays in, fuel only. And here comes the high class number 20 car of Anders Fjordback and behind with the white tail, that's Ben Hanley for Dragon Speed. Out comes the United car. Is he going to be in front of them? Yes, he is. No, he's not. They go speeding by and Hanley looking for a move down the inside. That will be for second place. And he completes that pass on Anders Fjordback finally. LMP3 Graf car also getting in the way of the 22 United car into the chicane. So Phil Hansen's got to get rid of that P3 car first. He does around Curva Grande. And then he is chasing Anders Fjordback. 32 is in. This was our race leader for United Autosports. So Dragon Speed lead from high class. United's 22 car is in third and right behind 37. That's the cool racing car of Nico Lapierre. Lots and lots of pressure now for Phil Hansen for United Autosports and into the Lesmos. Slower cars in front. He almost had Nico Lapierre alongside him. Goes by the P3 car. There's a GTE car in front as well. Frantic stuff for Phil Hansen, defending hard. Nico Lapierre right behind. And Lapierre is not alone. Euro International still leading. United Autosports, Wayne Boyd now. Good to go to the end. Inside the final 20 minutes, the gap is half a second. Nico Kari, the Finn for Euro International. Final pit stop for Ben Hanley, the Dragon Speed number 27 car. This will be a shorter stop, don't forget. There's less fuel needed to get to the end. Can he come back out and in a podium spot? Phil Hansen leading now for United Autosports in car number 22. Everybody else taking their pit stops a little later. United were out of strategy right from the beginning of the race. The question is, have they got enough fuel? Felipe Albuquerque and the crew will be watching everything closely. Battle for ninth, red, white and blue, the Graf Racing car, 24. The Algarve Pro Machine of John Lancaster chasing Thomas Laurent. Oh, and Lancaster's got a good run going. Squeezes through as they both go by Graf's number nine LMP3 car. But now he's got a slower Ferrari in front and that gives the Graf car of Thomas Laurent a chance. Gets by David Perel quickly, but was it quickly enough? No, here comes Laurent, squeezes through the eye of the needle. Thomas Laurent the long way around the outside, two wheels on the grass. Lancaster barely gave him room. And Laurent losing traction on the grass, having a look at the inside, but he's not going to get by there. There was no overlap. Wow, frantic stuff inside the final 10 minutes at Monza. Last 10 minutes is as crazy as the first. Dragon Speed and High Class in front. There's the 37 car following behind Nico Lapierre. This is the battle for third. Third, fourth and fifth, as close as you like. Three cars and three minutes to sort out who finishes on the podium. Frantic stuff. Last lap for Phil Hansen. Going by the GTE Porsches. No, he's not into Varianti Ascari, the Duquesne car behind Tristan Gombody isn't a threat. He is a lap behind, but he will be a distraction. Hansen goes by one, goes by two Proton Porsches. They are not breathing in the United garage. He can let Tristan Gombody unlap himself because the chequered flag awaits again. They continue their unbeaten run, United Auto Sports, this season. Victory in LMP2 at Monza goes to Phil Hansen and Philippe Albuquerque. And it is an astonishing 1-2 for United with a 32 car in second place. 
That's the teams and drivers' titles for United Autosports and a grand slam for the 22 car. Dino Linardi and Inter Europol competition claim their first win of the season in LMP3. And Tiziana Borghi, the Kessel Racing team manager, has her fingers crossed. David Perel takes the chequered flag. Kessel Racing win in Monza. Second win of the season. Mikhail Pronisevsky very happy with that. It's a 1-2 for United, 22 from 32. Dragon Speed disqualified in post-race scrutineering because of a problem with the diffuser. High class then take third. Inter Europol win in the LMP3 from Euro International and the number two United car. And Kessel Racing take victory from the 77 Proton Porsche and the Iron Dames in third. G-Drive and the Iron Lynx number 60 car do not finish the race in Monza but it is all about United Autosports yet again. Philip Albuquerque and Phil Hansen have just won everything. I don't feel massively happy because I feel like I really let everyone down in the first corner, but we, we clawed it back throughout the whole race and we had the pace and um, and yeah, it was just remarkable that we came back and won. Massive thank you to, to United. They've done a great job over the last three years and my dad as well. I'm speechless, to be honest. It's it's just a dream. I just, uh, I'll have this guy to the rest of my life in my memory because uh, we all, I think what we did is just incredible. Phil, a remarkable whole season, amazing job. Third win of the, of the year in LMS and we win it before for the last race. It's just uh, congratulations to United. They're joined on the podium by their United teammates, Alex Brandl, Will Owen and Jop van Oetert and the Dragon Speed drivers before their disqualification in post-race scrutineering. Both LMS titles have been won by United and more. A championship 1-2 sealed by United Autosports as well as the World Endurance LMP2 drivers title to go with it. The battle for third will be between Graf, Panis and G-Drive. The first win is always very, very good. Um, finally, we had a few attempts and always had some little problems. Now we had a perfect strategy from our engineer. A very good start and uh, it finally paid off. They're joined on the podium by the reigning champions from Euro Interpol, Nico Kari, Nicola Malan and Jacopo Barato. And the current championship leaders in the number two United car, Wayne Boyd, Rob Weldon and Tom Gamble, who finished third. And they retain the points lead from Inter Europol and Real Team. The top four, including Euro International, will battle for the title in Portimao. Huge credit to the team because they managed to call on both full course yellows uh, the pit stop just in time. We're at the right place at the right time. The team made the right calls and that's what's required in a race like this. It's a race of strategy and not just pace. David Perel, Mikhail Bronizewski and Nicola Cadet, the winners for Kessel. Christian Reed, Michele Barretta, Alessio Piccariello, second for Proton, and then Michelle Gassing, Rahel Frey and Manuel Gosner. That's three podiums in four starts for the Iron Dames. The last race in Portimao will be a title duel between Kessel Racing and Proton and the Iron Dames will fight to hang on to third in the standings. It's Monza, there are so many choices. All right, let's narrow it down. Choice one, early in the race, very tricky conditions. And this is Alex Cugno in the red, white and blue graf car. The slipstream, the outside move in traffic on Cool Racing's Antonin Borga. Got it through, got it done. And then used a slower LMP3 car to hold Borga off as well in Curva Grande. Choice number two then, Jonathan Hershey for Duquesne. Hidden behind the black and white Algar Pro car of John Falp. The American paints himself onto the inside line. And yet, Hershey somehow dives through into the Varianti Ascari using the Nielsen LMP3 car. 
Third choice, John Phelps teammate Seaman Trummer down the inside into the Parabolica. Charles Milesi in the Dragon Speed car has no answer to it. Well, if you've made your choice, go to the ELMS Facebook official page and vote. In the news from Monza, the 2021 European Le Mans series calendar was unveiled. Six races are scheduled, starting with the official test before the season opener in Barcelona in mid-April. We'll head in May to the Red Bull Ring. That will be the warm-up for Le Mans. And after Le Mans, in the height of an Italian summer, we will return to the Autodroma Nazionale di Monza. It'll be baking hot at Le Castellet at the end of August for round four. We'll head to Spa in mid-September and then the season finale in Portimao at the end of October. And that's where we head on November the 1st to round out this year's campaign. <laughs> Yeah.